Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We're here live at IBM's IOD conference at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. This is the second year for theCUBE where we've been at IOD. We go out to the events like information on demand. We extract the signal from the noise, which is what everybody's trying to do with, with big data and analytics. Wes Hunt is here. He's the Vice President of Analytics at Nationwide Insurance. Wes, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on. So, Tell us a little bit about uh, your role at, at Nationwide. We'll get into your business a little bit. Sure. Well, Nationwide is a, a mutual in insurance company. Since 1926, we've been selling auto insurance to our members, and we also sell many other products, homeowners insurance, commercial insurance, pet insurance, financial services products like annuities and, and, and life uh, policies, uh, mortgages. And my role I in the marketing organization is help us understand all of that customer data that we collect and to draw insights from that and allow us to help take action to improve the relationships that we have with our members. So what's going on in your, in your business? I mean, obviously there's a lot of new entrants. Um, there's been a lot of pricing battles um, that I think you guys have tried to you know, stay above the fray, but still, a lot of people say, oh, cheap insurance, great, I'll buy cheap right. insurance, and then it's uh-oh, you know, when there's a problem. But nonetheless, a lot of competition, a, a lot of pressures on your business. I wonder if you could describe those a little bit and talk about how you guys have responded. Sure. Well, the insurance category, uh, the property casualty category, is extraordinarily competitive. Uh, many, many insurance companies, and, and we're all going after uh, a, a fairly mature uh, group of, uh, of customers. Uh, what we uh, seek to do is we seek to differentiate on service. Now, there are some companies who will differentiate on pricing, uh, but our um, model is to differentiate on service, and uh, we do that because we're a mutual insurance company. And we really focus on uh, seeking to uh, deliver great experiences for our members. So, yeah, so explain a little bit about what that means, uh, service in, in, an, in an insurance context. Sure. Uh, well, the insurance, co um, uh, the, the, ins the experience that co consumers have with insurance tends to be low involvement, right? Uh, you'll, you'll, uh, sign up for insurance, and you'll get a bill once in a while, and then you might have a crash, and you need you need coverage, uh, you need to be uh, made whole. Well, the, uh, the the experience that we seek to deliver for our members is really to be proactive, to demonstrate that we know our customers, to care about our customers, and to be easy to do business with when they need to uh, have service, and that's really where we focus our our efforts. Yeah, so okay, so once a year, you know, you, everybody can relate to this, right? You'll get a form in the mail and it'll say, okay, there's, here's your coverage. Yeah. All right, so when you say proactive, you mean, hey, maybe you should adjust that coverage, uh, maybe you got too much here, not enough there, maybe rebalance the portfolio. Can you do things like that today? Sure, so we look at uh, what we describe as moments of truth, and through analytics, we've been able to, dis to determine which moments of tru truth matter for the members that we serve. And uh, when you get one of those bills, for example, uh, sometimes customers value a needs-based assessment to make sure that they're adequately covered if something uh, you know, poor would happen to them. And uh, we use that as an opportunity to really reinforce uh, our value proposition, which is being uh, on your side. Now, how do you do that? Do you do that through the agent? Is that something that so, you guys... Uh, yeah, Nationwide is a, is, is, has a unique distribution model. We serve customers online, uh, through agent offices, and through uh, um, telephone call centers. What we seek to do is deliver that same great experience regardless of the channel that consumers like to do business with us. And so we work on uh, not only analyzing data but making sure we deliver data to the, into the hands of those who are working with our members so they can deliver that great mm -hmm. experience. So that consumer interaction occurs between the customer and, and the agent back-ended by by your infrastructure, your knowledge, your data, your best there, practice. There's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of data collected and there's a lot of data that uh, needs to be uh, 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 adjusted to make sure that we understand what it means, and then we simplify that and deliver it back to, the, to those who are working with our customers in easy to understand uh, uh, data insights, and they use that to, to deliver our, our, uh, our service from us. What's the evolution of your analytics business uh, look, look like over the past, let's say, five to seven years? Sure. Where did it come from and where is it headed? Well, uh, Nationwide uh, has, has always been on your side. Since 1973, that's been our jingle. Uh, and so we really are a member-centric uh, company. Uh, but we had to do a lot of work to consolidate some uh, back-end systems that stored customer information and policyholder information and claims information. And we did that over the last five years. 
uh, really to focus on bringing a complete view of our customers, a, a 360 degree view of our customers, uh, an understanding of the interactions that they've had across the different channels. Uh, and then we seek to uh, analyze that information and identify areas where we can help deepen relationships. Uh, as an example, uh, we want to make sure that consumers don't have to retell their story. Have you ever had one of these experiences, and it's consistent across many different uh, consumer uh, categories, but you're on the phone with one person, you have a problem, they can't help you, so they transfer you <laughs> to somebody else, and what's the first thing you have to do? You have to retell your story, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Well, uh, you have to retell your story because the data isn't, in the, it isn't traveling along with the phone call. What we seek to do is really uh, break down those barriers, put that information that's critical to the experience into the hands of those who are serving our customers, and in doing so, our customers, uh, our customers get better service. Well, I imagine in addition to the different channels and touch points with customers, you've also got different lines of business. You've got home, you've got uh, car insurance and other, other types of insurance, and I imagine um, I would, I would guess that those had kind of developed in silos over the years, and that would be, I would imagine, part of the integration and kind of laying the framework for this analytics-driven culture is to bring those right. together to get that 360-degree view. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we believe that members um, uh, are members of Nationwide, and they think of themselves as members of Nationwide. Not so much uh, between one business unit or another, but they're served by the company. And so we really uh, need to focus on making sure that all of that data uh, where they've invested in us by trusting us with their data is put together in a way that allows us to demonstrate that we know them, that we can care about them, and that uh, in using that, we're easy to do business with. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these data sources, kind of, I guess you might call traditional data sources that you've been building over the years. Um, what has been the impact of the so-called big data movement uh, at Nationwide? Are you looking to work with other types of data sources, outside sources to serve your cl clients better? Um, you know, maybe social data to kind of be more proactive right. in finding, uh, you know, issues with certain policyholders who might be airing their, their grievances on Twitter yeah. or wherever. What is, the, what is the impact or what is the, uh, the work you've done in terms of sure. the big data space? So we, uh, we focus on, uh, on a lot of data, uh, different types of data sources. Certainly many of them are structured data sources, data, uh, data about profile, um, customer profile data, customer preference data so that we honor preferences, uh, data about the experiences that they've had with the company. Uh, and then we also are beginning to uh, utilize some data sources like uh, the social stream and, uh, and to listen to customers and use that in our marketing research and to help make sure that we're responding uh, when there's an opportunity or a need to respond uh, through, the, through uh, social media. Uh, our focus is really uh, to, to seek to understand the customers as well as we can, to know them better than anyone else, and, uh, and then use that information in a way that will help us demonstrate that. Because at that moment of truth, the moment when uh, a customer is delighted by service, that's when these big data and analytic investments come to life. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you decide you know, what initiatives you're going to pursue? What is the, um, do you have kind of a, a lab model, essentially, where you're looking for new use cases and you're testing things out with maybe subsets of customers? How do you actually um, get started with new types of analytics? Because sure. you know, we have a lot of practitioners who watch the cube, and you know they're very interested in some of these use cases, but really not sure where to get started. So we, uh, that's a great question, and uh, and so the, the, we focus on seeking to uh, get rapid insights. We use uh, methodologies similar to agile development methodologies, where we seek to iteratively answer these questions, um, and in doing so, we get uh, more rapid uh, insights. Now, uh, if you don't then tie uh, that agile approach to a, uh, a consistent set of problems to be solved, you could c come up with a little bit of a, uh, a scattered approach to uh, problem solving. So we seek to define a research agenda, and that agenda really guides how we execute our research. Uh, that agenda in, uh, our, in the area of customer analytics where, where I work is really seeking to understand what are the, uh, what are the interactions and uh, uh, that customers engage in, or the company engages in, that cause uh, uh, retention to be maximized. Right? How can we how can we create the most uh, retention benefit as possible, uh, serving our, our members so they don't have to go and look for other insurance coverages? Uh, we also uh, and that and that uh, that agenda can last um, 
for multiple years because it's a very rich area of, of understanding. It's a complex uh, product and it's one that we seek to, uh, to, to really understand. Uh, we also have uh, individuals who, based on the knowledge that uh, our partners within the business who've learned what we can do, uh, often come to us to then seek additional um, areas of uh, in investigation. And so we'll, we'll work with them to, um, to, to, stri uh, to strive and, 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 uh, and find insights that are going to drive business for us. Mm -hmm. So GPS data brings some new opportunities for you. You've, you've yeah, partnered sure with uh, Ohio State Police with, to do bait cars, right? Yeah, Maybe we could describe right. that concept, which is a very cool idea. Uh, and also, you know, some insurance companies are saying, hey, you know, volunteer, voluntarily put this GPS in your car and prove you're, you're a good driver right. and cut rates. I wonder if you could talk about those, those two trends. First of all, what are bait cars? Sure. Explain to the audience how that works. Well, um, so one of the um, areas of, um, uh, of loss in insurance are individuals who are, um, uh, you know, are engaging in fraudulent activities or uh, are in uh, theft rings that cause uh, consumers who are honest and good consumers to have to pay more for their insurance. And so what, uh, what bait cars do are, are uh, to help um, uh, the, the police uh, catch those rings that are operating uh, car theft um, in, in, uh, are, are, uh, are focused on, uh, on stealing cars or, or, or organized crime that's sort of supporting that. And so we support that through uh, some of our, um, our, our claims uh, safety initiatives. And um, it's, a, it's a good uh, partnership with us. Yeah, okay, so the idea is you're putting GPS and, and visual, uh, uh, audio visual tracking within the car. Thief, the thieves don't know which car is a bait car, and uh, so it makes them think twice. Makes right? them think twice, and maybe if you can, if you can avoid some of that uh, theft, then uh, it's good for, um, good for insurance rates uh, where we operate. And then how about this trend of voluntarily putting a GPS in your car? Some people are concerned that, oh, <laughs> maybe it's going to raise my rates. I mean, right. How do you deal with that? What's, what are you seeing as trends there? Well, we, uh, we see that as a, a fairly significant trend in, in the insurance, personal auto insurance marketplace. Um, and uh, Progressive is, a, is really the leader in that space. Uh, and others are following uh, closely behind with uh, the, uh, the devices, telematics devices that um, individuals can use um, and, and based on their driving behaviors uh, can sometimes, uh, oftentimes, uh, get uh, better rates. Um, that's a process where individuals opt in to um, that product and so when they do, uh, they are agreeing to, to, uh, to demonstrate their driving record and uh, use that and then that's used in the uh, pricing of the insurance coverage. So do you, th do, you, do you expect the model for that will will be sort of almost like a pay by the drink, I think a cloud computing, right, over right. time? Sort of adjust as you adjust your driving behavior? Is that where telematics will ultimately we, take this? Well, we think that telematics is a growing area for yeah. us and one that's, um, uh, we're, just, uh, we're just seeing the earliest adopters right now. It, it will be um, here for a long time to stay. Yeah, I would suspect personally that that would be, at some point it won't be an opt-in, it will just be the way things are done. And potentially moving to maybe a real-time insurance, wouldn't that be great, where you, you don't have to pay for insurance on the days you're not know, using your car. on how you drive, right? right? You, could right. you could change the entire <laughs> industry in really an entirely new way of uh, yeah. interacting with customers. Um, so what are some of the more interesting things you're looking to do in the future? We've talked about kind of the telematics data. There's some other uh, areas, to the extent that you can, I know you don't want to tip your hand to your competitors, but sure. obviously you're in a very, very uh, competitive industry. Uh, what are some of the ways you're looking to use data in the future uh, that you think might give Nationwide kind of a, a competitive edge? Right, so we, uh, we believe in, in, in taking action on the insights that we develop. And so a lot of the opportunities that we have to uh, identify areas of, um, of improvement uh, really have to pass the threshold that uh, A, the organization is uh, able to adopt those insights and act on them, and B, there's a willingness to do that. Uh, so uh, much of our focus in, in analytics is really to uh, understand and act on uh, those insights. Uh, where we're focused right now is, uh, is really on, on retention. Uh, we're seeking to, to move in uh, pretty rapidly into uh, making sure our sales engine is operating as efficiently as possible. And then there's some, uh, of course, there are always opportunities to find ways to improve uh, through continuous improvement efforts using uh, analytic insights to help drive, drive that and become more efficient, uh, 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 making sure that we, d we deliver efficiently uh, with our, our members um, and, and, uh, and, and, and operate at the cost that's our, that is uh, 
is as uh, efficient as possible, as, as small as possible to, to, to meet our needs. And, and let's talk a little bit about IBM. Uh, we've seen actually quite a few customers today, both on stage and uh, here on theCUBE. Uh, in a, and most of them are talking about uh, IBM as really a partner and less as a, a vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, working closely with IBM to kind of develop some of these new capabilities. Talk a little bit about your relationship with IBM. Uh, not just the technology, but the, uh, the kind of the relationship around actually building these capabilities uh, that are really designed to deliver real business value. Well, uh, we, uh, we've worked extensively with IBM on the, on the effort to build a uh, 360 degree view of our customers. And uh, that effort is uh, not only in the hardware and software arena, but also in services. And so what we find is that uh, to help solve a problem, uh, we go and find individuals who have great uh, skills and, uh, and, knowledge, and deep knowledge. Um, these are uh, really enterprise class systems that are, uh, that, that are being constructed and they have to be available to 24-7 uh, uh, you know, to hundreds of different, different uh, sites and on the, online. And so you, you, you have to make sure that the engineering is really strong. And we found that uh, the effort that we've engaged in uh, really helps when we had IBM help uh, products uh, do that and then the services team uh, help us deliver that. You hear a lot about you know, individualism and marketing to the individual consumer and your model as an industry are generally based on aggregated risk. Mm -hmm. um, as you go more toward the individual, how, how or if does that and how does that change your, your models of how you approach the business? Well, the model um, is, is a really personal one. The um, uh, pricing, of course, is based on uh, uh, pooling risks and the, and the nature of insurance is that uh, you're paying in so that um, you do, uh, you're going to help others uh, when they need it, right? And if you need it, then someone else has paid in to help you. Uh, that process is, uh, is designed to make sure that uh, you, uh, you're able to meet those, uh, meet those promises when you need to make them. Um, I don't think that that's going to change. The nature of that product, is uh, the insurance product, has been around for a long, long time. Um, and what's going to happen is that uh, in increasingly uh, consumers expect, expect personalization. Uh, you expect personalization in your phone bill, you expect personalization on your cable bill, and consumers have expectations of personalization that just naturally flow into the less tangible service categories as well. And uh, we're seeking to, to get ahead of that curve and use that as a way to differentiate our value proposition. So that's a data opportunity. It really doesn't change your back-end business model. No, the, I think the business, uh, the business of insurance is pretty consistent, and it's, uh, it, its structure is going to be uh, here for, for quite a while. One of the things we've been talking more and more on the, uh, on the Cube, especially given this whole big data theme, is, is information quality. Um, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, specifically from an organizational standpoint. Um, how prominent is the information quality discussion? Uh, who's responsible for information quality? Do you have a you know, chief data officer, for example, or a data czar, as some people like to call it? Uh, well, we, uh, we, uh, we recognize that quality is important, and uh, quality, there's two parts of quality. There's, uh, there are the creators of data, making sure that we do that with, uh, with good quality. Uh, at Nationwide, we focused on establishing standards for information that needs to be collected, and to make sure that it's put in places that are consistent with uh, the standards that we define. And then we, um, and then you, then, then we have to focus on um, quality of uh, data for the use that you intended to, uh, to apply an insight or data to an insight. Um, and quality on the usage side is, uh, is increasingly an important topic. Uh, what we find is that uh, uh, sometimes people have challenges in buying into quality. Um, and so we seek to try and under explain that as, as, uh, as effectively as we can. Uh, quality is one of those uh, elements where um, an organization uh, who values data will seek to uh, make sure that the quality of that data is, is high. Um, and we've made uh, really strong strides at Nationwide in improving the quality of data, not just in customer data, but across the board. And it's, and it's really helping us uh, get better insights and faster insights and delivering that uh, with confidence to those who are making decisions. Do you have a, a so-called data czar or a chief data officer? Are, uh, you, are you it? Uh, I'm, uh, we are, I'm not it. Uh, we are uh, in the process of establishing a uh, chief data officer uh, role, and uh, that should be something that's moving along here pretty soon. Do you think, um, maybe you, you can't talk specifically to Nationwide because you haven't decided yet, but, but I'll ask anyway, will that, 
role report into IT? Will it be autonomous, separate, independent of IT? Do you have any opinions on how it should be organized? Uh, we, um, we think that data is an enterprise asset and that uh, there's no one owner of data. Uh, we actually uh, view that data is, uh, uh, are the artifacts of the business process that are executed, and, uh, and therefore there are many people who are accountable for the quality of that. Uh, we, uh, and we also uh, uh, approach that uh, with this idea that there are multiple sponsors. And so um, uh, you have stewards of data, and, and, and different teams are uh, the stewards of different pieces of data, and we, we have those uh, today. We established them a few years ago. We have stewards of customer data, we have stewards of product data, we have stewards of financial data, and we have, um, uh, we have stewards of claims data. And, the, and, and those stewards really work together as a community to help make sure that those who are users of that data are, um, are, are, are served good quality information against which to do their work. So it's a team sport. Has to be a team right. sport, and, absolutely. And, and so um, is it, is it does that function sit within, or do you think it will sit within the IT organization? Uh, I think it will. I, the, uh, the governance, uh, data, data governance role is uh, part of our IT organization, and it's supported by stewards who are part of the business. And so that's where we get, a, get this partnership. And so that's actually a good point. I mean, where governance sits may oftentimes determine where the CDO fits, because right. it's not always within IT. And, right. But when it is, it probably makes some sense. And you, you sit within the IT organization? I sit within so marketing. Within marketing, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the old, the old bromide with the, the the guys in marketing are going to spend more than the CIO on <laughs> data. Uh, well, we data. Uh, you know we have a we have a really extensive partnership with our our partners in IT and uh, the sponsors of the initi initiatives that we've uh, talked about today are, are were jointly sponsored between the chief marketing officer and chief information officer as well as a really strong partnership by the business unit presidents who are the ones who are benefiting. Uh, and, and taking the risk of making decisions based on insights. Yeah, so the BU president, ultimately, it's his or her P&L that's, that's right. paying for the initiative, which I'm sure the CIO is happy about. They don't want to own that initiative, right? Right, that's right. Be so we, 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 seek to, uh, we seek to find those who are, um, uh, well, are the decision makers, because the decision makers are the ones who are going to benefit uh, from these investments and, and make sure that they help sponsor uh, the work. Of course, you have to do it uh, with, uh, with uh, teams like the marketing team and the IT team to make sure that that uh, we're, we're serving uh, serving our teams effectively. There's historically been a lot of tension between the lines of business and IT. Uh, you know, you can't do that. You know, the whole cloud computing comes about and, and how, you know, Amazon's trying to change right. the world. Swipe a credit card. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, how has that relationship evolved in, in nationwide? Let me talk to your personal situation between, it sounds like you have a good relationship with, with IT. Was it always that way? Did you guys have to go through some growing pains? And, and what do you yeah. want to see from IT going forward? Well, the, the role of, um, uh, of, a, of uh, the relationship between IT and business is one where, and, and business defined as marketing or the, or the sales teams or, or those who are uh, owning the operations. Uh, is a is an area that historically sort of you could you could generalize and say is not always the, the best relationship. Uh, we we seek to find common ground at Nationwide, and we seek to uh, define uh, who's accountable for different piece, uh, p pieces and parts for their roles that individuals play, and um, and then we and then we seek to bring people together. Right, it's a very collaborative organization, uh, the Nationwide uh, Enterprise, and by being collaborative. Uh, we're able to, uh, uh, I think, break down some of those historical uh, barriers that um, many other firms either have, ex have, have experienced or are currently experiencing. Uh, we think that uh, uh, success has many fathers, and so that's uh, one way we approach our, our work. All right, Wes, last question. We've got we to run. <clears throat> so talk about your vision for um, the analytics group at, at Nationwide, where you want to want to see this this going over the next you know five seven years? Sure, we see um, we see a uh, analytics uh, and and data that supports analytics uh, as really the enabler of executing our corporate strategy, and um, and so we are uh, we are we are seeking to make sure that we deliver great insights, ones that can help move the business forward, and we do that in a way that's to uh, ex totally consistent. With, uh, with our mission and vision as an enterprise. Uh, our vision is to, is to stay on that path. And that path is, uh, is, is growing, and uh, we've got to make sure that we're able to keep up. 
Uh, of course, there are challenges with uh, finding skilled resources, and there are challenges with meet, meeting the demands that come from individuals who are, uh, uh, have problems that, that need to be solved. Uh, and our role is to make sure that we're able to, to, uh, to support and, and, and deliver those who are making the decisions in our, in our business uh, to help them drive forward. That's our, that's our focus. Awesome. Uh, you know, actually, one, one more question, if sure. I may. Um, for the younger people in the audience who want to get into the data business, um, what would you advise? What kind of skill sets? You know, maybe share Great. some of your background. Absolutely. What, what makes a good person in your role? What, what, kind, of, uh, what kind of attributes? So we, we, found, um, uh, we found that skills are one of the uh, areas where, where uh, we're concerned. So we need, to, we, need to, we need more talent than we have today. And we need to, uh, and we believe at Nationwide that we need to grow that talent. Um, so in 2008, we established a partnership with the Ohio State University to uh, help us uh, define um, uh, individuals who are skilled in, in conducting analytic research, and um, and really to uh, develop this talent pipeline that will that will allow us and Nationwide uh, access to resources that are going to help us drive the business forward. Uh, if you're uh, looking at uh, analytics as a career. Um, I would uh, emphasize uh, developing skills in rigorous problem formulation. What I mean by that is, is uh, strong critical thinking skills. This is not uh, computer science. It's just good, strong thinking skills. I balance that uh, skill in, uh, in critical thinking with the ability to communicate and, and, and synthesize information. Because great analytics that are left on the uh, that that aren't understood by those who have to have to use it, are likely not going to have the same buy-in as uh, great analytics that are understood. And then, of course, there's a there's a strong element of developing the skills to actually be a practitioner to, to develop those uh, insights in a, in a rigorous way that's going to be accurate. Uh, we believe at Nationwide that you have to have skills and computer proficiency. And what I mean by that is you're going to have to be able to uh, uh, write some code. You have to have skills in, uh, in quantitative methods, that's statistics and other um, uh, mathematical uh, approaches to, um, uh, to apply to the data. And then you have to have skills in uh, understanding business process. So really at the heart of analytics is an understanding of what is the business that uh, is, is being executed and your interpretation of how, how effectively that's working. And those three skills uh, are really the skills that are found in many data scientists. Wrap that with problem solving and synthesis or visualization, and what you find is a really well-rounded individual who will have uh, tremendous opportunities to, uh, to learn and grow and influence organizations over time. Yeah, that was great. I was thinking you were just describing the modern day data scientists. Yeah, right? so. yeah. All right, Wes, thanks very much for coming to the Cube. It was great okay. to meet you Thank and you. Uh, really appreciate your time. Okay, keep it right there. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're live in Las Vegas, IBM IOD. This is the Cube.